574 preseason right here right now. I'm Lauren Hoover with, alongside William Troyer. Well, we got some great things coming up in the next few weeks. We're starting off with women's soccer, women's volleyball, and men's soccer. Women's soccer doesn't actually play this weekend. Their game did get canceled, although Friday we had men's soccer and women's volleyball start off their season. Everyone is in preseason right now, but as of right now, we're having some really great stuff happening. Great expectations, so why don't you start us off? Take us through a little bit of women's soccer. What's been going on this season? We had a new head coach. What will be going on the past season? Who do we lose? A little bit of everything in between. Yeah, Justin Crew is the new women's soccer coach. He's the 10th coach in Goshen College history. Um, just a little bit of background on him. He comes from Ancilla College. After leading that team to their first ever, first ever NJCAA regional tournament, which would be junior college. He coached at Olivet Nazarene, his alma mater in Illinois, where he won the NCCAA Coach of the Year. Justin Crew looks like a fantastic replacement and a fantastic coach coming into this women's soccer program, which hasn't been doing too well the past few seasons, but we take a look at their roster right now, and well, the record from last year wasn't as good as we wanted it to be. Hopefully this year, looking a little bit brighter. A significant amount of people are freshmen and sophomores, which makes this team very malleable, especially with the new head coach. Yeah, a lot of incoming freshmen this season. Um, last year they finished 3-12-2 and two overall in 0-8-1 in conference play. Um, a lot of times we saw them struggle to generate any offense, and in most cases were unable to keep teams off of the scoreboard. However, we look for that to change this year. They had a great goalkeeper, Katie Bayer, she'll be coming back. Um, Lost a lot of defensive players, Lena Charles, to name one, Caitlin Huey, um, Catherine Laura, and Brenda, and Brenda Tellez. All of them will be gone this year after graduating a few. Yeah, but at the same time, a few juniors still in the bunch that were starting up last year, and a few freshmen as well. Why don't you run through a little bit of the returning starters now? Um, Allison Eversall, she was the second highest goal scorer for the Maple Leafs. I looked at for her to improve off of her two goals last year. Um, London Fiesel, she attempted the most uh, shots on goal for the team. Look for her to put in a couple goals. Um, Talia Borum, who led the Maple Leafs with six goals. And then, yeah, as I touched on, Katie Bear, who was one of the better goalkeepers in the Crossroads League last year. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to this women's team, especially not just this year, but the coming years as well. Again, like we said, a lot of sophomores and a lot of freshmen being able to make this team what it will be in the next few years. It's definitely going to be a growing season, definitely not where we want them to be in peak season, but it's sure going to be an improvement as to last season. Luckily, we don't have any notifications on any injuries, so as of right now, the entire season should be healthy as of right now, but we're looking forward to keeping the team healthy. That's definitely going to help them improve overall. Now to volleyball, which is my neck of the woods. You were able to be calling a lot of soccer last year, along with Zach Begley and Tanner Camp as well. But now we're turning over to volleyball. Tanner Camp and I basically covered the entire season last year, so this is going to be an interesting season this year from my standpoint. Biggest losses for the volleyball team: Schwarzenjuber, Gurki, Schrock, and Maust. We had Darian Maust up at the net, fantastic at blocking. We had. Swartz and Juber, who was powered, was unmatched. He came in as a transfer and left as a superstar. We also have Megan Gerke, great service, and then just a great all-around player, along with Strzok. Strzok wasn't able to see too much action out on the court last year, but you know what? Her senior year, she was able to make a difference on the team. So we took a, take a look into the head coach for the women's volleyball team, who hasn't changed in the past nine years, head coach J uh, Jim Ruthier. JR, as most people call him. He has a record of 122 to 147 overall here at Goshen. So that's a pretty good record considering for Goshen Athletics. Yeah. So we're looking forward for another fantastic season, especially touching around the rest of the Crossroads League, which the top pretty much three, four teams have all individually lost between six to four seniors. So it's going to be a very young Crossroads League this year. Goshen College, not an exception on that. 
although some of the freshmen looked very promising. So we're hoping for a good season. The key players looking on the volleyball team right now will be the seniors, per usual when you're talking about a new team. Haley Vanderbilt, Allie Rower, who will be a junior, and McKinnon Tracy will be a senior as well. So we're looking for them to really lead the team. I had a chance to talk to Jim Ruthier earlier on, about a week ago. He said he's very, very hopeful for this season. He said everyone on the team is very positive. He's looking forward to the season. And I know I'm myself and Tanner Camp will be too. He'll be able to hear us on the dial as well, call most of those games throughout the season. Probably the biggest thing what to expect though with the volleyball team is it's going to be an all-around team this year. There's not going to be the strength behind the serve and the strength behind the net like there was last year, but it will be a cross court this year. Everyone will be pulling their weight. Everyone will be doing their job. There's already in a few practices that I've seen much better communication than what we saw towards the beginning of season last year. But with that being said, with a well-rounded team, there comes a lack of specific power. Power that Swartz and Juber had. We saw her spikes really nail it you know, where they needed to go last year, and now we've lost that. As a team, though, they weren't doing too hot last year. Kind of like the women's soccer team, they're looking for a rebuild year. They went 12-19 and 19 overall last year, 4-14 four and 14 in the crossroads. Four of those wins came at home and six on the road for the overall. So Maple Leaf is looking to get back. And of course, the biggest rivals right now, Marion, who's lost six seniors, Indiana Wesleyan, who's also lost six seniors, and Taylor, who's also lost four seniors. But out of those competition in the Crossroads League, Marion's a very old team. They're going to have those juniors and sophomores return, and it's going to be very tough for them. Same with Indiana Wesleyan. They were a very young team, so they're still having that energy and then that respect coming up. Taylor, no freshman as of yet that I saw on the roster when I looked. That could be changing, but you know, that's a surprising factor. If you're not bringing in many freshmen or none at all, that's gonna hurt your team. So we're looking to upset Taylor, which they already upset Taylor last year for, the, for, for their first win, for Goshen's first win, and also one of the few losses for Taylor and Eric. Anyway, so it's gonna be very exciting. And I'm super happy to look forward to that. Although, we take a look at their roster, which looks pretty, pretty young. Starting off with a number one jersey, who's going to be a setter at 5-1, Naomi Willis. Number two, Shelby Younts. She's a sophomore returning. She's been playing for a while. She's going to be good on the team. 5-8 from Michigan. Megan Manley, the senior. 5-8, wearing number three as normal. Jennifer Ritchie wearing number four. She's a sophomore. We saw her as well coming out towards the end of season last year, setting at 5'7". Allie Rower, the junior, the setter, and probably the best person to handle services on this team. She'll be wearing her classical number five jersey, standing at 5'6". Haley Vanderbilt, another senior on the Maple Leaf team, also great at blocks and great at spikes. She'll be replacing Swartz and Jeeber with the power on this team. She will be standing at 5'9 at the net. McKinnon Tracy, the other senior on the team, also going to be very handy across court. She's going to bring that leadership. Tessa Clark, the sophomore, got to see a lot of action last year as well. A freshman coming in that was looking pretty promising will be two people, Christina Ducart and Riley Woods. Christina will be transferring in as a sophomore, so we're seeing her first season, although she'll be a sophomore. Madison Colas, Elizabeth Breckbill going to be great up at the net. Elizabeth at 6'2", Madison 6'0". This is going to be a very tall team. Also, Brooklyn Harris and Haley Pennington are going to be key players as well. Autumn Hilton and Sydney Cruz, the senior, will be back in action as well. We're excited to see her. And then Taylor Ash as well, who we saw at the net probably, it looks to be still the tallest person on the team standing at 6'3". So we're looking for a very good season. I'm hoping to go over 500 this year, but that might be stretching it just a little too far. <laughs> So, Will, we wrap up volleyball, heading to, well, the most anticipated sport this college will see this season, this entire year in my mind, men's soccer. Very excited to see them play. Aaron Patrick entering his fifth year here. Um, his overall record is a little deceiving at 33, 34, and 9. He did have to rebuild this program 
Um, last season they were 12, 6, and 2, and 4, 3, and 2 overall in conference. But as many of you know, this is the one of the strongest conferences in the country. Um, they lost Brody Nofziger, their only starter is that they lost. He was a talented forward on the team and a good leader. Um, without him, somebody will have to step up. But they have returned every starter. Um, talent all over the field. They've got a core group of guys who like to play together, who enjoy playing soccer. I traveled with them last year. They're all great. They bond well. So I, they're looking for a really deep postseason run here with the group they're bringing back. And hey, they're still bringing in more and more players from Trinidad and Tobago. It seems like our entire team is starting to go that way, which is actually pretty cool because everyone knows that Tevin Gills works well with almost anyone. And now that they're bringing in more and more of his former t and current team members, that's just going to make that bond even tighter. But with all these returning players, Goshen is still going to get some injuries, and this Maple Leaf team is not all healthy, which could be a blessing in disguise. We have Joan Escalante not able to play so far. This is a torn ACL, I believe. I think, yeah. I think that's uh, it, he's, got, he's got a bad knee injury. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. And, well, starter for the past two years, a lot of players know his defense, a lot of players know how to work around him, so it might, he might be better on the sideline helping coach, per se. I think that's the biggest question entering this season for the Maple Leaf, is who is going to be the goalkeeper, at least for the first half of the year. He's expected to come back and return eventually, just not right away. They have Tyler Bourne, another senior at goalie, who's been playing alongside Johan for a while, so maybe it might be him. Well, they also brought in a new transfer, Thomas Fonseca from Portugal. So, I don't know much about this guy, but I, fresh, I mean, incoming transfers are usually fun players to see. And we actually had Ben Cotton, another sportscaster of ours, actually go out and talk to Johan and, you know, get a little bit of an injury update. Johan looked very positive until, you know, his injury. He said he's, he's just trying to stay positive. His mental focus has been positivity trying to be able to use his leadership in a different manner than just out on the, on the field right now. Being able to help Tyler Bourne and just trying to get people out there. Tyler, you said, was a starter until Johan came in as well. So they've been working very closely. They already have that dynamic. The team knows both of them very well. So it might be a little bit rough in the beginning, but at the same time, you're getting new fresh blood out there, out in front of that net. It might look to the positivity of that. And then, you're comfortable with that guy, Johan will come in every, every once in a while when he gets his you know, knee up to speed and doctors release him. you be able to mix and match people now, which might actually be something that they're looking forward to. Yeah, depth is always a positive in, the, in any sport. Some good returners they have coming back, they have the Ashelman brothers, uh, Spencer Ashelman, who's now a senior who's been playing great for his whole career, and then his younger brother Stewart, who was a freshman last year, a great goal scorer, and now a sophomore this year. I look forward to seeing them play together with the uh, brother connection. That's always fun to see. Tevin Jilks will anchor that uh, defense out there, um, and then Ali Smith is another great complimentary player to have on the wings. It is going to be very exciting to look at all of this, and. Why don't you run through the current roster for the men's team, and then we'll start on looking at, well, the Crossroads League overall, where we're headed, and some predictions for the season and this week. So take it away. Um, at goalkeeper, zero, Tyler Bourne. Number one, Johan Escalante in goal. Number two, Ethan Francois Revalier, a senior right back. Uh, number three, Gabriel, Gabriel Costa, excuse me a junior. Number four, Sven Bodstever, a sophomore. Number five, Tevin Jilks, a senior center back. Uh, Spencer Ashman, senior out of Salem, Oregon, number six. Ali Smith, forward, number seven. Nate Nussbaum, senior, number eight. Number nine, Uriel Macias, a sophomore. TJ White, number 10, a junior midfielder. Number 11, Stuart Ashman, a sophomore forward. Number 12, Keegan Shiflett, a sophomore transfer from Indiana University East. Number 13, Tomas Fonseca, the goalkeeper out of Portugal, as we talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, 
Number 14, Joao Victor, a junior center back from Brazil. Number 15, Javier Prieto, a center back from Elkhart, wearing 15. Number 16, Matt Granzit from Concord High School, an incoming freshman. Number 17, Jamel Remikin. Number 17, Jamil Ram Kissin, a junior from Trinidad and Tobago, as you talked about earlier. Number 18, Lucas Vilela from Brazil. Number 19, Ari Benjamin, a senior at 6'3 from Trinidad and Tobago. Number 20, Lucas Bontrager coming in from Goshen High School. I got to see him play a little bit when I was at Goshen. He's a really good player. 21, Alejandro Rosales from Elkhart. Number 22, Josh Garcia, a junior. 23, Flavio Cruz, also from Goshen High School. Got to see him play a little bit. Another incoming freshman. Number 25, Denver Beck, freshman from Vermont, actually. 26, Jorge Miranda, another freshman. Number 26, another t number 26, Oscar Ocampo, sophomore from Elkhart. We got to see him play a little bit last year. 27, Tristan Smucker, a freshman. 28, Christian Sala from Elkhart, Indiana, another freshman. Number 29, Murray Cockburn, a senior transfer from LSU Shreveport. Interested to see him play. It's going to be interesting to see this season play. So, taking a look now, as we start to wrap things up, a little bit of uh, what we think is going to be going on this season. Let's start off with uh, going back to a women's soccer. You think that they're going to be better than last year. How do you think the beginning of the season is going to shape out for them? I think they're going to start off good, hopefully strong. I mean, the players are probably anxious to get out there with the new coach. The new coach is anxious to get his players out on the field playing together. They've been playing all summer. Um, I'm excited to see him play. I'm definitely looking for an improvement out of that team, maybe around the five or six win mark, up three wins or so from last season. Seems reasonable. I was about right there with you. I was like, well, they've still got some young blood. They haven't seen much action. It's going to get a little bit of time to be get used to. I think the first few games that they're going to experience is going to be a little rough. But after that, I think that they're suddenly going to improve. And by, you know, the time snow starts falling on Goshen College's campus, pretty much, we're going to see some hard-fought wins. And if they take a lot of losses, it's going to be close losses. It is going to be strong ones. So I feel like that they're not going to be all there, but they're definitely going to go down fighting. Taking a look at volleyball, personally, I think they're going to be very similar. Very similar to what, what they were last year. They need to work on that communication on the court. Seems to be very well so far. It's been going pretty well for them. So I feel like they're going to stick it around 500, although that could fluctuate depending on injuries and so forth, like any other team. Then for men's soccer, I think... I think we can predict this one. I, I'm i hoping to see them go all the way in the Crossroads League. Yeah. At least. At least. Coach Patrick has said before that he wants his team to play in Nationals, actually. So, last season they were just two games away from that. They're returning everybody but one starter. I mean, this, this team has the biggest expectations for the upcoming year, and I think they're ready to take that on. I hope they are. I really hope. At the bare minimum, if they can play through the Crossroads League, and they will be able to absolutely destroy them. So, taking a look, just the upcoming schedule for this week. Honestly, I'm going to start off with volleyball on this week. They played Arizona Christian. They took the trip down to Arizona. Now they're facing off the other scrimmage on their docket. Again, Glen Oaks, 6 p.m. at the Gunner Gymnasium. It's their home opener scrimmage. It's not their home opener for the season. It's a scrimmage at home. You can go see them play 6 p.m. Wednesday this 15th. I think they might be able to take it. It's going to be a little rough, kind of like women's soccer. I feel like they won't be able to, it, it, it probably will be going three, at least three sets of a loss. Uh, it's just a little bit of uh, negativity on that side. I really don't think that they're all put together yet to take the first win at home. I think after this, if they take one or two losses, they will be golden for the remainder of the year. I feel like Governor State, which comes up on the 17th, and in the 18th, they also have two games in Milwaukee, both of them tournament-style games, Governor State, Clark University on the 17th, 
Mount Mercy University and Cardinal Stritch University on the 18th. I feel like they will be able to go 500 in both of those games. And I feel like they'll, they'll be able to be taking all of these sets to at least five. Five sets, I feel like they can go that way. I'm looking for about 500 on the season, though. But we could be wrong, like we always can be. So, but for men's soccer, what are we thinking about them? Well, wrapping up, they will be wrapping up their uh, trip to Oregon, actually, on Tuesday the 14th. Both of them are exhibition games, but then the 21st of, or Tuesday the 21st against Madonna University is their home opener at John Ingold Athletic Complex. Looking for a win there. I mean, starting off the streets and strong, as we talked about. And then they got Holy Cross, Central Methodist University, University of Rio Grande, and uh, then University of St. Francis. That's all home games to start off the season. I mean, you got to expect them to go four or five and zero. Oh, hope or at your home, got to start off strong. I'm honestly looking forward to this season for volleyball and men's soccer as well because volleyball, as we all know, had a rough past, had a rough last season. I think they're going to have a rough first few games. Same with women's soccer. I think they're going to have a rough first few games. Men's soccer is probably the only exception where I think they're going to come out strong and they're going to come out fighting. Hopefully we'll be seeing that. So with that being said, any last thoughts, Will, about any of these three teams coming out into this week or the remainder of the season? Just excited to get the fall sports season going. True that. Well, as we sign off here on 574 Sports preseason, we're looking forward to starting some new things the remainder of this year in 574 Sports Land and, of course, Goshen Sports in general. I'm Laura Hoover with William Troyer. Let us know about your thoughts about not only this episode, but the season in general. Tweet us and Goshen Athletics as well using the hashtag one leaf. We want to see all everybody's responses and excitement for all of these teams because they're going to need all of us like we need all of them. So look forward to hearing us uh, talk more about these teams and we'll be putting out a schedule here pretty soon about what we're going to be broadcasting. So hope to catch you on the dial. For William Troyer and myself, this has been 91 Won the Globe, your home for Maple Leaf Athletics.